Charles Darwin wrote wonderful sentences, beautiful books and fabulous phrases. And one of my favourites is when he describes his mind being a chaos of delight after seeing many of the splendid life forms in a Brazilian forest. So we have asked everyone who's been involved in this app when they experience that chaos of delight. I think one of the great delights about making uh, television programmes um, as opposed to doing scientific research is the breadth of ideas you get exposed to. So, I mean, so for, you know, 20 years or so in my research career, I was focused on not only particle physics, but a very, it certainly for, for the last 10 years or so, a very specific area, this area called diffractive scattering. So you get very specialised. Um, one of the great delights about the, the, my recent sort of three or four year dabble in television is that you get exposed to, to new ideas. And actually the most exciting, I think, because I'd not been exposed to it before, was Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. I mean, of course, every educated person knows a bit about Darwin's theory. Um, you know a bit about mutations, you know a bit about natural selection. But actually the, what took me by surprise when I really thought about it and, and read about it and, and really was exposed to it in detail for the first time is, is the power of the explanation of the, what Darwin for, called the endless forms most beautiful that we find on, on Earth. Um, it, it's a tremendously precise and powerful and compelling and well-tested theory. Um, and I find it remarkable that he came up with it and was and the precision of the language he used was so so right um so long ago and um, before way before we knew about a hereditary mechanism for example way before the discovery of dna way before the underlying mechanics of of, of biology were, were known in any detail uh, you get the a, a broadly correct explanation of how complexity emerges from simplicity and how diversity emerges from from smaller populations. We didn't even know, you know, the, the, we had no idea about the timescales involved. You know, we didn't know. Um, if you look at the the, the, the physics of stars, how, how do, what's the lifespan of the sun? We had no idea the sun's been around for five billion years. Uh, that until you knew about nuclear physics, there was no conceivable energy source. We're talking about, the, well, again, the 20th century before you have any explanation at all of the energy source of stars, the fact that stars can last for billions of years, uh, the fact that the Earth has been around for 4.54, I think the current measurement is, billion years. Darwin didn't know that, uh, but, but he got the explanation for the, for the endless forms, most beautiful, correct uh, and, and then essentially we've been filling in the detail ever since and I found that uh, tremendously uh, sort of I, I suppose a, a great another great example of the power of scientific thought of the scientific method of this idea that you can understand nature by looking at it I think it was Richard Feynman who who defined, you, you find many definitions of the scientific method out there. Um, I think Feynman uh, said something like, it's just understanding nature by any means possible. That's basically, that's it. And, and, and the fact that Darwin did that um, by looking at some specific examples and then just thinking about the way that the, the natural world looks, I, I found it tremendously powerful. I think I would have never said b before uh, I made the series Wonders of Life that that I thought that biology um, operated with the same level of elegance as, as physics. So I would, if you've asked me who are the great minds, you know, I, I, you say Newton and Einstein, and then perhaps later Feynman and Fermi and Niels Bohr and Schrodinger, you know, like that. Now, now I, after learning about biology, I, I would certainly add figures like Darwin to, to that list of great minds. And, you know, it's one thing knowing that you should say that, but it's another thing actually seeing why, particularly, Darwin should be spoken of in the same breath as Einstein.